clear. Okay. Uh, thankfully, I don't have to recompile. Okay, so here's uh, here's and there's a little lag because of the the projector, but um, so here's Wikipedia with the debug uh, with the server debug view, and um, you can see that it's very uh, very smooth and fast. And in fact, it's rendering at um, the GPU time is 0.46 milliseconds, um, which is a lot of frames per second. I think it's something like 500. Um, so GPUs are very, very, very fast. And in fact, if you program them correctly, there is essentially no web page out there that they cannot get through in multiple hundreds of frames per second. Um, so uh, this, this also shows kind of our debugger. Um, we have... Uh, we have a debugger that allows, has some pretty nice features like live shader reload um, that gives us, it allows us to very quickly uh, track down performance problems. So because we're really fast existing web pages, it's actually kind of hard to find a web page that we're um, slow on. So we have some, uh, we have a few benchmarks um, and these are totally artificial bench benchmarks. Um, but, uh, they basically kind of push things to our, to the limit. And here is one of the, uh, here is a pretty uh, benchmark. And this is actually um, entirely done in CSS with divs that have uh, borders. So this is a few hundred divs that have borders that are moving around um, and the background is changing all the time. Uh, and I will not show this in Firefox or other browsers because it's like one frame per second and will freeze my browser. But it is, uh, but it, it's very uh, fast here because we essentially did all of the blitting on the GPU. We cached it all, and in fact, uh, what is it? It's like 1.2 on the CPU and 0.1, so it's about 300 something frames per second, probably at least. Um, and here, here's another demo, um, and this one is much much slower. Here's a bunch of rotating spheres that are actually uh, all CSS divs using uh, box shadows. I can, I can remove the uh, the stats so you can see it a little better. Um, oh, there's a white line across the middle. Oh well, I was uh, that's a bug we need to fix. But anyway, um, aside from that one pixel, it's it's going at about 60 frames per second, and this is not 60 frames per second elsewhere. Um, and the uh, and it, what's actually what we're actually bottlenecked here on is the CSS restyling, setting the new CSS properties. Uh, necessary to position all of these things absolutely is quite a bit slower than painting all of it. Um, so essentially we've we've removed painting from the bottleneck uh, uh, in Servo. So, uh, <laughs> so, that, so that, are there any uh, questions? Sure. Yeah, uh, I'm not actually sure that doesn't that may have been an issue with our that may have either been an issue with our shaper or with our pixel snapping code. That's one of the things we're uh, picking bugs out of right now. Um, pixel snapping is a whole area I didn't get into, but CSS has these tricky pixel snapping rules that are actually kind of not even spec, and you kind of have to reverse engineer other browsers. Um, and we're still picking bugs out of that in web render. Um, that may have been some of it. It also may have been uh, high DPI issues. So the it may be that uh, it's detecting the high DPI wrong in pixel snapping in, in some weird way, but that's that's basically what that is. Uh, we don't have subpixel positioning yet at the moment, which doesn't matter on high DPI, but uh, it can matter in lower resolutions like this. Anything else? Uh, sure. Are techniques that modern web developers are using to speed up performance of their website, is that going to cause backlash, per se, as this type of stuff becomes mature. So I guess our techniques that people are doing now to make it faster, are they gonna bite us later when we have these optimizations? That's a very good question. I don't, uh, so, so uh, the, the question was, uh, are there are the techniques that web uh, developers are using now, are they going to uh, cause problems for this new sort of uh, rendering architecture? And they will not cause problems. We can, so in particular there is one technique that is uh, very that is often heard as performance advice that is very kind of specialized to existing, uh, you know, normal painting backends, which is animate transforms and opacity. Um, people say don't animate margins, don't animate absolute positioning because that's slow, causes repaints, um, can't be done on the GPU. Well, 
that advice is kind of obsolete with web render because everything is done on the GPU. We do full repaints on every frame. We don't really have this distinction between things that, that can be done on the GPU and things that can't. Um, I don't think it will hurt us. It, it shouldn't. It shouldn't hurt us. I mean, it's just it's a slightly more annoying way to do the same thing. Like now, absolute positioning is something that's viable as a it should be about the same speed as transforms. Uh, so it's kind of needless developer pain, but uh, it shouldn't hurt us. In, in terms of uh, in terms of ad performance, it shouldn't be a problem. Mm -hmm. uh, you said you're you're using a vertex shader to do to do the, the fast clipping. Mm -hmm. um, are are you is that using alpha blending or or, or, or some some other technique? Uh, so okay, so the question was, do we use alpha blending to do the uh, to do the the clipping um, and if, if I understand you right, the um, so for the main clipping where you're just clipping a rectangle to a rectangle, we don't actually need to do any per pixel stuff at all. Okay. All all we do is we compute the new boundaries of the rectangle, and then we take you know things like the verte the texture coordinates, the color coordinates, and by and do bilinear interpolation to figure out the new ones. So it's basically just taking vertex to vertex, vertex clipping. Gotcha. There is a more complex one, uh, which is rounded rectangles. When you have like rounded borders. Then we actually have to do compute an alpha mask and do that in the fragment shader. Um, but that is th – th that's, that's not a problem. It's just – it's a slightly different mechanism. Um, yeah, yeah, I've done the, the alpha mask. And... Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, basically our main, ver our main fragment shader does like – has a m color texture, a mask texture, and, color, and uh, a color. And uh, with that, you can pretty much do all the, the clipping that, that you need um, in most cases, unless the only case that's really weird is the one where you have like overflow hidden div with a weird transform inside. Um, but that's pretty rare. Uh, so the question is how this interacts with WebGL. Um, and basically, it's the same thing that a compositing window manager would do. So we're using OpenGL, they're using OpenGL. What we do is that, that gets redirected to a texture and we render that texture as part of the scene. It's just kind of an opaque thing that we render as part of the scene. Um, we, we do have WebGL support right now. Um, it's, not, it's not as fast as it could be um, because to make context, to make multiple GL context fast, you kind of have to do like OS specific stuff that we haven't done yet. Um, but there's no reason in principle why it, it, it can't be uh, fast. So it basically becomes like a traditional compositor for the case of WebGL. Uh, and I think Canvas will likely be that way too. Canvas will probably be rendered using Skia GL or something like that and uh, composited into the, web, into the web render scene. Any other questions? Uh, so the question is, how does it compare to Qt Quick or a native UI toolkit? So I don't really know how Qt Quick works. Um, so I don't know. Um, when it comes to native UI toolkits, uh, it kind of depends on the OS. But in general, native UI toolkits are written uh, because they're, they usually predate a GPU compositing. They're usually written to um, ex vector graphics APIs like the, like the ones I mentioned in the beginning that are uh, that were started as CPU and then moved to the GPU. So I don't think they so WebRender is in principle um, something that makes better use of the GPU. However, you know this this changes quite a bit. iOS is significantly better for the GPU than Cocoa is, for example. Um, so these things these things change quite a bit. But overall, uh, I mean WebRender is pretty. I, I don't think you're going to be doing. Much better than web render. It's it's pretty optimal, but you know uh, the but it it really depends on the UI toolkit in question. I I think that it should be as fast as native. I mean, or or faster than native. Has there been any work on you kind of alluded to it a little bit on taking the, the sort of API with half a dozen primitives that you mm -hmm. have and, and exposing that kind of at a user level for write to write to directly instead of writing CSS. Uh, so the question is, uh, has there been any thought about taking uh, our primitives and exposing them directly instead of through CSS? And that's that's an interesting idea. I haven't really thought too much about it. We are certainly, I hope that that, that we don't have to do that because 
uh, there's a lot of stuff that's basically um, removing the layers of CSS that are needless abstractions right now. Um, so that my hope is that in the future we will actually be able to web web authors will actually not need to have a separate thing. They'll just write you know some sort of CSS and it'll just work. You know things like uh, so right now actually the bottleneck um, for the the spheres demo was actually is actually parsing the numbers that are in the CSS because you know when you move the sphere you have to uh, set a string which then gets parsed again as CSS. That's kind of needless overhead. Um, there's work in Sanders Committee. Uh, Google has done great work on the, uh, pushing things like type CSS on. Um, hopefully with that kind of thing, there won't need to be uh, a level of a sort of thing that pierces the veil of CSS because CSS will be such a tiny layer it won't matter anymore. Um, and to the extent that it's not a tiny layer, I think we should be working on new standards and new specs that help it become a, a, such a small layer that it doesn't matter, matter anymore. Um, I, I, I hope that people will not I th CSS is uh, pretty easy to use, and I hope to maintain its ease of use, you know, you know uh, going forward, while allowing people to get the best performance that they can. Yeah. So the question is, uh, have we looked into Vulkan? And that's actually great. Uh, a great question. We have had Vulkan in the mind from in mind from the beginning. That's part of the reason. That's much of the reason we had the multi-threaded architecture. Um, so the plan, tentatively, is we have all these worker threads that are building batches. Right now, they have to serialize and push everything over to the GPU thread. In the Vulkan world, ideally, um, they would be able to directly insert into the command queues, and we wouldn't need that separate thread. All of the node compilers could just insert into the command queue directly, which would eliminate uh, some synchronization overhead. So yeah, we, uh, I'm pretty excited about what Vulkan can bring. Also, less buggy drivers would be wonderful. Um, and Vulcan promises less buggy drivers because they're much smaller. Anything else? Right. Uh, yeah, so the question is, is there more work that we thought about moving to the GPU? And the answer is definitely yes. I, uh, I hope to be talking about some uh, work I've... So uh, I've been doing an image codex. Um, so we're looking at things like image codex. We're looking at font glyph rasterization. I alluded to that earlier. Um, basically, my view is we should take the pipeline starting from the end, the, the, end, you know, the end being the screen, push that into the GPU and keep pushing backwards in the pipeline until we hit a wall. And I, I, and, and I hope we don't hit that wall pretty soon. So we're looking at things like glyph rasterization and maybe um, you know, getting some of the displayless construction to be on the GPU, things like that. Um, so eventually, hopefully, we'll hit full utilization of the GPU capacity and full utilization of the CPU capacity, and then we'll be running optimally. But there's, I definitely don't want to stop here. I think that there's, there's a lot more that we can continue to do um, with the GPU, and it's going to be increasingly important to do that going forward, given that GPUs are just getting more and more and more powerful, and CPUs have kind of stalled. Anything else? Okay, great. Well, uh, thank you, um, and I'll be available for questions afterward if anyone wants to talk. Thanks.